Welterweight Championship of the World, Ricardo Mayoga taking on Vernon Forrest. Do you think we'll see anything different this time, David? I'll tell you what, we'll see a little bit of both things that we saw in the first time. We'll see Forrest on the outside, we'll see Mayorga trying to nail him with the right hand. I think we'll see the whole mix. It's just a matter of who survives. Well, this uh, should be a tremendous fight as you take a look at the tail of the tape. Forrest is 32 years old. He's two years older. He has a little bit of an edge in the height, significant edge in the reach. He didn't use it the first time. Let's see if he does now. Well, we'll find out. We understand that Vernon Forrest, the challenger in this case, is making his way out. Here he is. He's a prohibitive favorite again. He's considered one of boxing's best pound-for-pound -pound fighters. Certainly in 202 after winning a consecutive 12-round unanimous decision over Shane Mosley in January in New York and then in July in Indianapolis in the year 202, uh, he was considered uh, just about unbeatable. But he opted to slug in that last fight, as you just described it, and they, in spite of the fact that he was a prohibitive favorite like he is tonight, Mayorga caught up with him in the third round, dropped him, and that's all she wrote. And this kid is a wonderful kid. He's a college graduate, had that tremendous amateur career, 225 and 16 as an amateur uh, record. He's a Georgian native, a terrific fighter. Outside the ring, he works with mentally challenged adults. So, I mean, he's just that sort of a great kid. He really is. He's been a good spokesman for the sport of boxing. He's been a great role model. You, you don't see his name in the papers for the wrong reasons. And uh, he, he was a Cinderella story, and he was dislodged by a Cinderella story. Yeah, when you see the other guy come in, a totally different sort of guy, uh, what I would call kind of a street sort of kid, but a, a kid you, you almost have to love because he's the ultimate underdog. Hey, he came in, he was a 10 to 1 underdog when he fought uh, Vernon Forrest in January, right after the fight. He starts smoking a cigarette, he, just, he, he, he uh, wears his emotions on his sleeve, and he was able to force Vernon Forrest into an emotional fight their first time. Well, you're going to see before the night's over what a character he is. As you know, he shocked the boxing world when he registered that third round KO over Forrest. That was in uh, January of uh, this year down in Temecula, California, a couple hundred miles from here. The book on him, he's a roughneck brawler. He keeps pressure on throughout. He captured the WBA belt by scoring a fifth round TKO victory over Andrew Sixhead Lewis, who at the time was a big favorite. Yeah, so he came in there and he's really made the most of his recent run. He's been a pro since 1993, but he's made the most of his last three fights that he had all those fights coming up to then. He knows how to parlay his role. Well, there's a great anticipation in the crowd here for the very first event at this arena because this fight, they've been waiting for it all night long, and the first two fights didn't really have the luster that we expected. But because of the type of guy that the Matador, the guy you're looking at, Mayorga, is, let's describe him. He's fearless, he's offensive-minded, he's a slugger, he goes all out for an entire fight. What else? He's super aggressive, he likes to get into close range and throw a lot of punches from all angles and hope that he catches you with the big one, as he did in the last fight. He's got great punching power, especially the right hand. You know, he's got determination. He's got a lot of other things, too. Toughness. He's got a crowd, a good toughness. The trainer, uh, very good. Ricardo Garibaldi loves to work on the inside. That's where he has to try to get in against Vernon Forrest tonight. And that's the book on Ricardo Mayorga. Can he do it again? Well, he's a prohibitive underdog in spite of the fact that he's the champ. At, uh, the book had it pretty much in the first fight. We'll see if they have it on this one. Remember, it's the big punch. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Orleans Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Don King Productions in association with the Orleans Hotel and Casino, HBO Sports, and CM Exchange. This bout coming your way, ladies and gentlemen, is sanctioned by the WBA President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Aurelio Fiengo, the WBC President Jose Su Suleiman, Supervisor Roy Van Putin, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Luther Mack. Introducing to you our judges scoring this bout from ringside, from London, England, Larry O'Connell, from Copenhagen, Denmark, Ove Oveson, and from Las Vegas, Nevada, Jerry Roth. Introducing our third man in the ring, our referee in charge, working in this, his 61st world title bout, Jay Nady. All right, fans, here 
here we go. The time has come for the rematch you've all been waiting for. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Orleans Hotel and Casino, it's time for the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA and WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with red trim, fighting out of Atlanta by way of Augusta, Georgia. He weighed in at the welterweight limit of 147 pounds. His record stands at 35 wins, one loss, one no contest, with 26 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he is looking to avenge his only defeat and to regain his title. Here is the former WBC and IBF welterweight champion of the world, introducing Vernon, the Viper. And his opponent across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing a black trunks with white trim, hailing from Managua, Nicaragua. He weighed in at a trim and ready 146 pounds. His record 24 wins, three losses, one draw and one no contest with 22 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the colorful WBA and WBC welterweight champion of the world introducing Ricardo El Matador Mayorga. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a referee in charge is Jay Nady. Now to give instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing schedule. Hey, Dave, I'm pumped for this one. This should be really... I've been waiting six months for this. It should be a terrific fight. Hey, you know, Rockman and Lewis did battle. They said it was a surprise punch. Lewis came back and defeated Rockman. Lewis did the same thing to all of them. A call after getting with a surprise punch. Remember, the objective is to hit a guy with a punch. Let's listen. You guys have any questions? No. Twelve rounds. I want a good, clean fight. Let's go to work. Okay, very simple. Let's go to work. In the solid black trunks is Ricardo Mayorga. Vernon Forrest has the white and red on his black trunks. So with the, I'd say the more colorful trunks, you're looking right now at Mayorga, the reigning champion of the world. What is it, a fluke? Well, that's what Bernard Forrest says. Don't forget Forrest outbucked Shane Mosley twice. He did it over 12 rounds in July and January, respectively, and 202. Here we go. Mayorga, cocky guy, street guy, comes at you with strange angles. He has very fast hands, and he will attack. He's a street brawler, and that's the way he wants to fight. Vernon Forrest, on the other hand, is a classic boxer and a classic guy and a classy guy. Dan Raphael of the USA Today says he's the classiest guy in boxing today. And you know something? I might agree with him. He said a good example. He's been a very accessible guy, good to talk to. Question for him now is can he stay outside or will my organ get in there and get to work on the inside? Great battle outlines here. Stop! 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 I heard Jay Nady say stop, and now he wants uh, Mayorga. And after warning Vernon Forrest first, when he says stop, he means stop. But it's clear to me that Mayoga wants to turn this into a big brawl. Very quick uh, left hand in the face of Mayoga as he came in. He comes at you with all kinds of strange angles. He's very awkward, but he has those power shots. Uh, he's not as awkward as, let's say, a Nassim Hamad was. Uh, he doesn't do all those foolish movements, but you can get hit blindsided by this guy because he never stopped throwing power shots. He comes from different angles, and the, the thing is, he's usually on some kind of balance so that he can fire those shots from weird angles and still be successful with them. And you see one outline of the fight already is that Vernon Forrest tying up as Mayorga gets on the inside. He probably will try to do that a lot tonight. Well, one thing for sure, he doesn't want to try and mix it up with him. He made that mistake in fight one, and you see exactly what David's saying, folks. You see that? 
He, when he gets to the inside, instead of exchanging, he's grabbing and holding. And that's the way he should fight him. I mean, this is a guy that outboxed a master boxer, Shane Mosley. So you don't want to get in a slugfest with, uh, with, uh, with a slugger. No, he really doesn't want to do that. He opened up the first time he got caught. But no knockdown there. He just rolled away. Awkward position, but awkward guys make you do awkward things sometimes. Almost a slapping movement with the left hand when he came in that time. And even though Forrest would like to stay on the outside and move, at some point he'll have to stand and be honest with Mayorga and get his respect. Well, he's trying to a little bit there, but Mayorga is just trying to keep the pressure on him. Mayorga is uh, such a precious sort of guy. It's very difficult in the early part of a fight for a boxer to do anything but sort of be in a survival tactic in the first couple of rounds. And that's all you have to do because then you settle down into what you do best, and that's box. And that's really what he wants to do with this guy. And don't allow anything that Mayorga does to throw you off that fight plan because if you do, you'll probably get the same results as you had in the first fight. You could get knocked out by this guy. This guy can bang. Very interesting to see how Forrest will progress here. You know, you don't want to make a mistake. And what will that prohibit him from doing in this fight? Will it make him too cautious? We'll see as this fight goes along. Closing seconds of the first round. And an interesting first round in that Mayorga would definitely be aggressive. That's about all you can say in that round. He came at him, and Forrest happy to stay outside and tie him up and just make sure he didn't make an early mistake. Hector Perez will do the talking here. What he's saying to him is throw one, two, and a right hand, so a couple of jabs and then the right hand. Side to side when you got distance, side to side. All right? Get a little more space and distance, okay? And work the jab, okay? And don't worry about him grabbing and tying and throwing you out. Stay behind the jab. You understand what I'm saying? And they want him to stay behind the jab. Vernon Forrest is on the outside. That's how he would be able to do it. Boy, a big shot. He wants to stay behind the jab, but not be caught too close. Vernon Forrest, by the way, had Al Mitchell, his coach from the Olympics, working with him. And his professional trainer, Ronnie Shields, also with him. And, of course, uh, Hector Perez with Stacey McKinley and Luis Sanaya and Luis Leon working in the corner of uh, Ricardo Mayorga. And as Mayorga catches it with a wild left hand, that left hand taken on the gloves of Vernon Forrest. Forrest continues to back on and tries to counter. Look at Mayorga right on top of the hallway. This is the fight we came to see now. Look at this. At some Forrest, point, Forrest is decided to make the goal, Dave. He has to. Forrest has to stand up at some point so that Mayorga does not walk right through him. Forrest cannot be reckless, but at some point he still has to stand and slug with Mayorga, who has confidence carrying over from the first fight it shows in this style. Well, uh, Vernon Forrest's style is he is a rhythm fighter. He gets into a rhythm, and he's a master boxer if he keeps his opponents at bay and is in rhythm. But as you said, and I totally agree with you, David, at some stage you're going to plant your feet and mix it up with this guy. You're going you're gonna to go to war. This isn't about just class boxing right now. This is establishing... You know, with the Latin fighter, who a little bit of mochisimo, I guess they call it, uh, in, in Spanish. So that's what they have to do uh, yeah. with this guy. And that's what he's doing. Remember I said in the last fight where uh, Quality wasn't doing anything straight? This time he picked him up. He probably wanted to send him down, but he didn't. But it's giving this guy an idea. Hey, okay, you're not going to get away with just trying to bull me over. You're not going to walk right through me. And whatever he has to do early in the fight to send that message is good because he has the reach and he's able to use it. And that's a slip all the way there as J. Needy waves it off. Mayorga comes right back with the speed stuff though and throws him over his outstretched leg. He could have not pushed him, but that's not his nature. He's a street kid. He says, if you're going to do it, Marquise, I can do it too. That's it. Round two. This is kind of what we expected now. This is why the place is jammed back in the uh, Raptors here at the Orleans Arena. They wanted to see a fight like this and they're going to see a dandy. This is only the second round scheduled for 12. All kinds of tactics by both guys. One thing that's clear to me is that Vernon Forrest is not going to just classically box him, at least in the first couple of rounds, because he can't. In the first couple of rounds, you know, he's doing a bit of catching here. Mayorga's keeping the pressure on him. He loads up a shot of his own. I think he's making a mistake trying to mix too early with him. Well, at some point he had to mix a little bit, but not too much. He should be throwing out a double jab. A double jab would keep the right hand off. And Mayorga's all over the crowd. is on its feet. They love it here. 
Naoga puts the pressure on the former champ. No, 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 no. And you see, it took all he had not to throw that shot that time. He's a smart fighter, you know. He's a street guy, but he's not a stupid fighter either. I mean, he's a very likable guy for very different reasons. <laughs> it's out of 10 seconds to go in the second round. An interesting round, but a round in which I think Mayorga will probably steal it on the judges' scorecards. I agree with you. He came in and did everything he wanted offensively against Forrest, who at least is surviving early, trying to get into a mode. Let's listen to Ronnie what? Shields. Why? You want to sit there and throw hard my hands at the guy right now. But the plan is to box this guy. You can beat this guy with this hand. That's all you need right now. You're nothing to me. You understand? You want to win this fight? Okay. Now the guy you the jab. That's all I wanted to see. Stay two steps in the mouth. Just back here. So Ronnie Shields shouldn't make it any more clear that he's not pleased with the way he's fighting the fight. But it's not as easy as he laid out. Oh no, no, it's not easy at all. He tried that in the first round. He's saying go to the buddy, he doesn't have any legs left. Well here's Forrest on the outside. This is where he stands up with Mayorga, two jabs in the right hand. And Mayorga comes leaping back with the right hand that scores the left hand on top of the head. And look how far he spins out to get into another punching angle. Wow. Well, it's interesting to say the least, and glad that you're going to be with us. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan with me, Dave Bontempo. We're at the brand new Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. And here we go again with Mayorga on top of Forrest. Forrest, the former world champion of the WBC with two victories over Shane Mosley, who's fighting Oscar De La Hoya later on in Las Vegas this summer. And Ricardo Mayorga, the pride of Managua in Nicaragua, managed by Carl King and trained by Hector Perez. Mayorga goes fishing with that left hand taken lightly on the gloves by Vernon Forrest. Now you heard what Ronnie Shields said, just jab, jab, don't mix with this guy. And I believe at this stage that's the way to fight him. But he should double jab. He oh yeah. The first jab out in the first round, he was just jabbing once and he was unable to keep Mayorga off. He wants to settle in with a good rhythm of the two jabs and then tie him up on the inside. And he'll be able to do what his corner is saying. Well, the corner of Mayorga just wants him to continue to put pressure on him. Remember, it was the third round in the first fight that Mayorga stopped him. Mayorga said that he'd stop him in the second round of this fight, so that psychological edge is gone for him. The uppercut doesn't quite catch him, but to this point, Brennan Forrest not able to hold him off for the exact reason what David just explained to you. No double jab. You can't hold a bull like this off with a single jab. But Ronnie Shields may have almost offended uh, Forrest a little bit the way he chewed him out. You know, some guys you can scream and yell at, and some guys you can't. Everybody's different, and, uh, you know, I mean, Forrest isn't doing anything now, which is no good whatsoever. He's caught, he's confused, he's in between styles at points in this fight. He wants to jab, he wants to do that exactly properly. He knows at some point he has to slow it a little bit. And then in the waiting game, well, he wants to tie up, but what should he do off the tie up? Mayorga, based on the last fight, has given him a lot to think about. It's very difficult for a classic boxer like this to classically box an awkward guy coming at you from strange angles. I mean, you couldn't have a classic boxer that would be real effective with a guy like, and I go back to Azim Ahmed, because he's the most awkward of them all, and Marco Antonio Barrera, as the fight progressed, was able to catch up with him by going back to his style and dictating his style. The problem is, can Forrest hang around that long as Mayorga tries to tee off on him without doing something? Caught him with two shots in the head. Caught him again with a good shot on the right hand. Has he hurt him? I don't think so. His legs seem to be all right. I think he got the... I think he hurt him. The round three was big in the first fight, but unlike the first fight where he, he found sudden power, he's been intimidating Gordon Forrest throughout this fight. Shane Andy looked at him with a look of disgust, but he didn't do anything wrong. It was Forrest who was hanging on to him. And now here's Mayorga, who's supremely and superbly competent right now. He wants to try and end this thing right now. Loads up the right hand. And again, Forrest hanging on at the legs with just eight seconds to go. In the third round, this is another Mayorga round. He's got things going his way against a very classic boxer. And you know, sometimes Styles just don't do it, kind of like Norman with Ali. Bernie Forrest cannot get into this fight. He's very intimidated by Mayorga, totally intimidated. Try opening metal. David, he's got him totally out of sync. He's got him off balance totally. That's what happens, as they tell my orga, when you hurt him, don't let him go. No. 
When you're on the right angle, you can go your right hand. Okay, so now he comes back and tells, okay, now, now you can get your right hand into the fight. And I think that's good by Ronnie, right but... Angle. As you take a look at Mayorga coming in, a huge right hand to the side of the head, and then keep coming back, and Forrest is frozen by Mayorga's movement. And remember the big thing, when you put it in a guy's head, I knocked you out last time, that's not forgotten. And it's in the back of both fighters' minds, and Vernon Forrest, I think, is still intimidated from that last fight. And Mayorga is super... A street and super confident right now as he chops him with the right hand again. Didn't get much of him, but he clipped him. And uh, you can be assured that uh, while we saw a lot, bit of a breeze, Forrest felt more than that. Would love that. Uh, touching him up the side of the head. Okay, this is round number four of the Orleans Arena. And this one is uh, what it's cracked up to be. The classic boxer trying to hold off with a double jab. He's going to have to get into it close to the right hand. He loads up to the right hand, but Mayoko wasn't at home for that one. He moved uh, just up to the right at the exact right moment to uh, avoid that. He's open for a right hand. He can be hit by a right hand. But Forrest is not that big a puncher that uh, Mayoga is. So it's going to take more to set him up for a big shot. Now he's waiting and waiting and waiting. And Mayoga wants to open up, but he does. He goes head hunting with a right hand. Catches him up on the air. Comes back with an awkward half left hook, half uppercut. Mayoga's got the confidence in his eyes. And now Forrest saying, come on. But does he have the conviction behind the words? Look at these awkward shots again. Go, Dave. Forrest has to decide soon if he wants to be in this fight from a tactical standpoint. He has to take that step up and just become a lot more aggressive, even if it is the double jab, because he's getting nailed with shots. And this is a continuation of the end of the first fight. But it just looks like, uh, you know, a guy, uh, if you want to put it in the school, you had terms, a guy in about the 10th grade fighting a guy in the 5th grade right now, because he's totally intimidated as uh, Vernon Forrest at this stage. Yet he has all so much gifted ability as a boxer, but uh, Mayoga just come out here to intimidate him. The bizarre thing is now, because of what's happened here, what Vernon Forrest did in the first two rounds against Mayorga in their first fight is looking smart now. He could do that because he had Mayorga backing up. He hasn't had Mayorga close to backing up once in this fight. And Mayorga nailed him with a bouncing left hand and he digs the body downstairs with the left. So he's not just going wildly head hunting. He wants to catch him with that chopping right. That's the punch he wants to catch him. And if Vernon Forrest comes in with that left elbow and that left hand down, he's going to get cracked by a right hand. It's just a matter of time. And it'll come right after an awkward sort of left and then the right hand. You see him stretching out. That time, J.D. said, no, don't hit him in the head. But partially that was Forrest's fault because he turned his back to him. But had that been two inches more to the right before my organ put that punch, he lands a good shot. And Vernon Forrest just landed a pretty good shot right on the button of Mayorga, but Mayorga's not reacting. He's just <laughs> oh, he's yeah. over the foot right hand. But Mayorga now comes back, and down he goes, and Jay Dady immediately waves off and calls it a slip. So, how about this? Forrest is nailed him with a couple of pretty good shots, and it's almost like Mayorga said, go ahead and hit me harder. Mayorga trying to load up shots now. Look at this. Look at this fight. Wild shots by Mayorga. They all go right on top and bang them again. Put it behind the ear. Chasing down Vernon Forrest's Mayorga in the closing seconds again of the fourth round. There's the bell ending the fourth round. How oh, about that for round? Look at the crowd in here, Dan. I tell you, they love the fact that the charismatic Mayorga said, go ahead, hit me. He, he put his guard down and got hit three or four times. It didn't matter. That's a mistake that Ronnie Shields is telling him to get the right hand at this stage is wrong. He's got to survive in this fight first before he can win. He can't box him. He can't hold him off. He's not double jabbing. You know what I do right now if I'm in that corner? Go ahead. Let it go. you got to take your best shot because you're not going to win. He's lost all four rounds. He's getting pushed around in this fight. I just say go ahead and slug out with him. Now Forrest is able to land a couple and Forrest Takes a couple more shots of Mayorga. And look at this. Two shots and then Mayorga goes, come on, let's do it again. Hits himself in the face, puts his arms down, and lets Forrest tee off on him and nothing happens. He's shaking his head, yes. Look at him, he walks right through Forrest's hard shot. He hit him with his best shot and it didn't bother Mayorga at all. In fact, he liked it. He invited him to do it. And then he assaulted him and Mayorga went on to win the fourth round. Now you know why there was no moss with Leonard and Duran. Exactly. Here we go, this is the fifth round, scheduled for 12. Mayorga out in front in this fight, and Vernon Forrest is not trying to make a war out of it. And you know something? I agree with that, because the only way he has any shot of winning. 
I would have said going into the fight, and I did say going into the fight, the only way he can beat him is stay outside and box him, but it's not successful. This guy is too awkward, he's too tough to uh, hit from outside, and he, he's just not landing anything. If you want to get in the fight, you got to mix with him now. Well, and you got to mix right now. The essence of intimidation, because in the first fight, Forrest stayed outside, and he was popping Mayorga, fighting with confidence. He has fought with no confidence in this fight, and Mayorga is sensing that, has a lot more confidence than the first fight, and he is bringing it to him, round after round. Okay, as uh, Forrest touches him up a little bit, Mayorga keeps coming forward. Mayorga wants to load up the left hook and then that right hand. You see him, you can tell kind of like when Larry Holmes used to move that head back and forth, back and forth, you know, that uh, he was moving it up to a second level. Now this guy, the Matador, as he comes forward, you see him start swinging that right hand and circling his hands around. He wants to mix it up. Bang, he nails him the right hand. Did he hurt Forrest? He's back down on his heels. He's on top of him. Mayorga really wants to get on him here now. He nailed him good. He hurt him. Caught him with a good shot. Minute and 30 seconds to go in the fifth round. And Mayorga, on my scorecard, has won every single round. And he's winning this round. Misses the right hand and sails over the head that time of Vernon Forrest. Forrest stands flat-footed. He's down on his heels, if you notice, David. Now he plants. But look at the awkward position that Mayorga's in. And he just knows exactly what he's doing. Catching a little breather right here. And he's expended a lot of energy. A lot of energy. And that's what Forrest is hoping he can do, is wear this guy down a bit. But it's not likely the way Mayorg is on top of him, because he's taking so many shots inside. Sooner or later, one of these big shots are going to land, and that's going to be all she wrote. Just look at this pursuit by Mayorga. Three jabs and a right hand. He is virtually chasing Forrest around this ring. He is coming through him. He's chasing him down. He's landing big shots. He is absolutely walking through him. And he has no fear of walking into a shot. He has no fear whatsoever, and that's intimidating itself. And don't forget, folks, I mean, this is Vernon Forrest, the guy that beat the classic boxer twice, Shane Mosley. I mean, this is a tremendous performance by Mayorga, who is not the gift of fluidity and doesn't have the rhythm that uh, Vernon Forrest possesses, but Forrest can't get into that rhythm, and that's the difference in the fight. He's also a guy that's got 26 knockouts, but you'd never know it by the way Vernon Forrest is waging this bout because he's been intimidated to this point. Well, Forrest cut him with a pretty good left hook there, but that's about all he's done in this round. And then another left hook. And right away, Mayorga comes after him, tries to get him with a chopping hand. Wild with shots, and Jane 80 jumps right in there to stop it. But look at the confidence on the face as they walk to the corner. Let's see if Forrest tries to parlay what he did late in the round. It will be interesting. It's amazing for a while, man, how attentive he is of what uh, Hector Perez says. He says when you're hitting him to the body, you're hurting him, but he says you're missing upstairs to the head. You tie him up, pull out, stay there, let the ref break you. You understand what I'm saying? You understand that? But everything is behind your jab. He's there for you. Here is Forrest on the outside, able to land a good hook toward the end of the round. And if he turns the fight around, remember that replay, if he's able to turn it around. Here we go, round number six from Las Vegas, Nevada. Bob Sheridan along with Dave Bontempo. Glad that you're going to be with us. We get a dandy for you now. And his Mayoga loading up the shots. Both of those look better than they were, and so was the third one, all blocked. That one got through and got him behind the ear. And did that hurt him? It may have. He chops him like he's chopping wood as he pounds one behind the head. Catches him high on the cheek. Misses with the left hand. Misses with the right. And now Mayoga has to back off a little bit as far as hangs on. J.D. says, keep those hands up. Right in front of him. There's a stiff jab in the face of uh, Mayorga. Ricardo standing right in front of him, just waiting to unload the power shot. He does, and it sails over the head of Vernon Forrest. It's frustrating to Vernon because he does so many things so well, David, but he's not doing well tonight. And where's the jab? He has, he's in the perfect spot to throw the double jab there, and he waited. That's because he's just been on the receiving end from this buzzsaw. He's had the fight out there where he wants, but Vernon Forrest cannot get the double jab off. And... Mayorga is walking through him. Right now, he's allowing Mayorga to just to come right in. He's not jabbing at all, never mind the double jab. Now he's even powering with the jab, not driving off the back foot, and that will allow Mayorga to just come in and do whatever he wants. Look at this, Dave. See, backing up. Now he plants and throws but misses. Mayorga comes with the uppercut. 
Forrest tries to answer with it as his own. He, I mean, there are times when he shows flashes of being a great boxer. He got that nice uh, left hook in that, that time did Forrest. But Mayorga is just stealing the show. The thought here would be that Mayorga was going to be so awkward coming in and instead he's walking right to Vernon Forrest. The question will be as the fight goes along, he's had many chances. Forrest's only shot is if Mayorga tires and that's going to be a, a demanding pace on him because he's been coming right at him the whole fight. Well right now Mayorga is not controlling the fight totally like he was earlier and Forrest is starting to get off just a bit more and uh, maybe all oh, big right hand chopped him though just as far as above to like swing this round around all of a sudden Mayorga cracks him with the right hand let's see if far came back to boxing again Mayorga throwing awkward shots comes in with the left hand and it makes uh, makes Forrest miss again day those last three or four shots by Mayorga were slower let's see if that's a trend or an aberration in this fight there's the double jab by Forrest and that's what he needs to do, but come back with a double jab of his own is Mayorga, although nothing landed that time. That's Forrest with his back to you. Mayorga coming to you. Forrest facing you now. Mayorga with his back to you. Vernon Forrest backs off to the quick step to the left and now off to the right. Makes now, makes the champ miss. The former champ trying to make him look a bit awkward. And, you know, this is his best round. He got him with a good shot that time. In fact, Forrest might get this round in some of the judges' scorecards. I think he... I don't know. Uh, how, how do you see it, Dave? I think he might get the nod. I think yeah. he does. Yeah, I think he's landing some good shots. At the bell, though, the Matador makes a point. But I'm going to give that round to Vernon Forrest. He wants more movements. Says hit him in the body, then cross him with the left hand. With the jab, all right? Look, when you get close now, touch him in the body every now and then. But then, look, don't stand there and fight. But if you go grab him, grab him there, and walk him to the center of the ring. You understand? His crunches is wide now. You know how Ronnie had you going low, dipping from the right hand? Start drilling to the body now. All right, the big story here now, has Mayorga begun to slow a bit as he did a bit in the sixth round? And can Forrest maintain a pace of boxing now? And, and if that's his strategy, you know, he's done a nice job. But uh, right now, we still have Mayorga quite, uh, oh, about four or five points out in front of the fight. Well, you know, even though Mayorga's last, uh, you know, he's been 12 and he's been 10, he hasn't been 12 rounds or 10 rounds in three years. His last fights were three rounds, one round, three, two, five, and then three. The guy is not used to a long fight, so that possibility of fading down the stretch does exist. The other good side for him, though, is he's built himself a nice lead. Yeah, but the other thing, too, is he trained in that tremendous humidity down in Florida where Hector Perez trains his fighters. He's from Nicaragua where they uh, have the uh, real uh, humid-type climate, so fighting up here in the air-conditioned comfort, uh, uh, he's well-trained for this fight. Uh, and, uh, you know, if he wilts a little bit, it's going to be a whole different kettle of fish because Vernon should open up with his boxing. But, you know, I don't see Vernon doubling with the jab and throwing the right hand behind it right now, but I do see the Matador slowing down a bit. And we still see Vernon Forrest waiting on Mayorga that the pace is slowing down for both. This is the opportunity for Vernon Forrest to step up and take command here because the fight pace has slowed. Yeah, this is the perfect fight right now for Vernon Forrest. The jab, jab, throw the right hand, get out of there. Jab, jab, throw the right hand and get out of there. Because Mayorga hasn't landed anything in this seventh round at all. This is round seven and then scheduled for 12 rounds. Mayorga doesn't appear to be as intimidating anymore either, and Forrest doesn't have that intimidated look in his eye anymore. One thing he does not have, though, is the uh, thought of stepping up his own pace. Although it's slowed down, he, may, he now has to step it up and show he wants this. Well, here's uh, Mayorga with a sort of second win here in the seventh out, trying to roughhouse it a bit as Jane Nady has to do his job and separate the two, and he warns... Uh, Mayorga about the head, watch the head. It's been a clean fight throughout, in spite of the contrasting styles. And don't forget, 
that uh, Mayoga taunted uh, uh, Farce's uh, wife. Well, Farce isn't married, but uh, Mayoga obviously didn't know that. But he said all kinds of nasty things about that at the press conference. And uh, Vernon Farce just walked out. He wouldn't have any part of that. He's a real cultured kid. As the uppercut, nice shots. He caught Mayoga with a nice uppercut. And Mayoga says, wow, how about that? And he didn't ask him to do any more that time. He got nailed and did not ask for a repeat. A real nice uppercut by Vernon Forrest. This is the Vernon Forrest you're seeing now that outboxed Shane Mosley. The awkward kid tries to throw an awkward punch, but right now he's being outboxed by uh, Forrest. And uh, Forrest started to turn it around in the last round, and he's continued it here. Closing seconds. This is a Vernon Forrest round. He's outboxed Mayoga totally. Mayoga has been absent of landing anything uh, significant here in the seventh round. Here comes the bell to end the seventh round, and it's in the book. A uh, forest round in my book. Take deep breath. Okay. Take deep breath. come on. Take a deep breath. Minor, you win in this fight. You understand me with that jab? The jab is gonna win the fight for you. You understand? The cheap boxing stepping around. He coming in with them left swings down that punch on punch. Grab his ass, walk into the center, let go. Same thing over and over and over. Take a deep breath, Look, man. Ronnie Shields absolutely angle. right there. I agree you with everything you're saying here. Shoot the right hand and then step him out. Keep stepping him out. Did you hear that stab that came down the line? And Mayorga landing only two of 37 punches in that round. A dramatic victory in that sense for Bernard Forrest as he's on the outside here. And that shows the fighters tiring when he lands two of 37. Well, nice movement here by Forrest, a good hook. I mean, Forrest is also helping that with his movement. Dave, after five rounds, I had Mayoga winning every single round. Now we've got Forrest winning uh, six and seven, and here we go to the eighth round. Now can Mayoga now pick up the pace, or can Forrest just turn this into the boxing match that he wants? He's in exactly the right spot that he wants to be, and this is the fight for Vernon Forrest right here. This is like two different fights, the first five rounds and the last couple of rounds. In, 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 the, in defense of Vernon Forrest, he survived what he had to survive to get into a boxing match now. But the most compelling irony is that Vernon Forrest figured to be on the lead after seven rounds, trying to protect his lead and keeping Mayorga away. Instead, he has to rally in this fight. Well, he just got clipped by two pretty good wild right hands thrown by Mayorga. Mayorga clips him again inside with the left hand. And Mayorga is showing a sense of urgency here in that he doesn't want Forrest to take this thing away because if Forrest wins the eighth round, you're going to fight this ever so much uh, closer now. As if uh, Mayoga wins this round, it's going to be significant and very difficult for Forrest to win a decision on our scorecards anyway. Well, we've seen some strange things in the scoring tonight. And we have different judges. We've got Larry O'Connell from the UK, Ove Oberson from Denmark, and Jerry Roth from Nevada. A As definitive the right shot hand there thrown. by Forrest. A very definitive shot. Good right hand. Another right hand gets thrown. Forrest landing the shots down. Now Mayorga doesn't have that look in his eye, that killer instinct that he had. And look who's loading up the shots in our folks. Remember earlier, Mayorga was coming at Forrest from all angles. Now he's coming straight to him, and he can be picked apart when he comes straight to Vernon Forrest. Remember, Forrest is a master boxer, and if, like Dave just said, when he comes straight forward like this, he's tying him up nicely now. About a minute and 15 seconds to go in the eighth round, he's outboxed Mayorga again in this round. And nice to uh, hit him with a power shot that time up behind the ear. And you see Jay Danny said, don't grab and hit. And I'm glad to see that. Mayoga doing the best he can, but Forrest has the ability to get that left hand high. So Mayoga is not landing that right hand power shot anymore. And this is Forrest's style of fight now. He's getting some power shots off now. You see Mayoga trying to double and triple with his jab, but Forrest showing some slick movement because he is a master boxer. And he, we're in the fight now that Forrest wants. This is exactly a perfect situation for Brendan Forrest right now. And there's enough time left for him if he's able to string rounds together for him to do what seemed impossible earlier well, when Mayorga was mugging him. This is a key round because Mayorga was in the process after a nice first minute by Vernon Forrest and trying to take this round back and Forrest is outboxing now with about 15 seconds to go now. You see this? He's just out hustling him now. And beating him to the punch, landing shots, landing clean shots, loads up the right hand, and you can feel this thing turning. Uh, we picked it up a couple of rounds ago. The question, uh, the judge is picking it up. But just when you say that, look who comes back. But that 
no matter what you say, is the Vernon Forrest round. This fight is getting real close now after Mayorga took the first five rounds of the fight. Forrest is rallying. I'll tell you this, Dave, if I'm in the corner of Mayorga now, I gotta force him somehow to win this round because Forrest has won six, seven, and eight. And if the judges have it the same way, he can outbox this guy the rest of the way and win this fight. And you just tell you guy, look, just split the rounds. You don't have to win the majority. The one thing he must do is win a round right now. The crowd is really into this fight there. Many of them are on the feet. They realize they've got a dandy. This is a classic fight. This is a good fight. First five rounds all the Mayorga and now Forrest showing what a real true boxer can do as uh, Mayorga's run out of gas just a little bit. All right, this is round number nine at the beautiful arena at the Orleans Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas. Been a big left hand landed by Vernon Forrest. He's showing confidence little by little to be on the lead and to get off first. Look at this. You can just see the determination from Mayorga, but he got clipped with an inside trip short left hand that held him off. Boris is caught in the middle here. He, at some point, he needed to mix up with Mayorga to get some respect, and yet he doesn't want to be reckless. So how do you walk that fine line? It's very difficult. I think he's walking it terrifically right now. He's up boxing Mayorga, and that's his game, and he's doing a terrific job of it. He doesn't have to mix with this guy to beat him now. All he's going to do, he's got Mayorga in a state of a certain amount of fatigue that he can't do the things he was doing in the first five rounds. You see the body shots here. He's cleanly outboxing him now, and he's turning this fight around in his favor. He's still behind in the fight. He needs to win 9 and 10 to get it even, but it's all his way right now. But now, Mayorga must land a dramatic blow and try to hurt the Brennan Parson. And Parson has escaped to this point. I don't know if Mayorga has got what it takes to really hurt him, uh, although he's got plenty of zing in his punches. But Forrest is very quick and very, very excellent uh, boxing skills uh, he's showing right now. We're seeing Forrest punch with some power and move, which was not there for him early in the fight. And now he's got Mayorga chasing him instead of just walking through him. Yeah, that is the difference between the early part of the fight and the late part of the fight. But he's not running away because he stands and plants when he wants and he's getting Mayorga to do awkward things. Even though he was off balance that time, he had Mayorga off balance too. Circling around to his right, plants, throws out the left hand, ducks underneath the wild left by Mayorga. Mayorga ties him up and Jay maybe separates the two. Now watch this as he backs off again, then he plants. He lets Mayorga come in, touch him up a couple of times, knows how to grab on. Inside of 48 seconds to go in the ninth round, this is another excellent boxing round again for uh, Vernon Forrest, the former world champ, who again, I reiterate, uh, outbox Shane Mosley, the master boxer. This time he's in against the puncher who he's trying to prove it was just a freak loss the first time around. But Mayorga is nothing more than uh, uh, really a street fighter right now who's uh, getting outboxed by a master boxer right now. Inside of 20 seconds to go in the ninth round. And barring anything dramatic, you see the way he's slipping the punches. But you know what it is, Dave? A whole different confidence for, Mayor, uh, for uh, Vernon Forrest right now. Totally different from the first five rounds of this fight. When Mayorga was pulling through him, he would move straight back. Now he's moving back laterally, and he's not getting hit as much. All right, there's the bell ending the ninth round, and that's the Forrest round of boxing, in my opinion. Mayorga winning the first five rounds and Forrest winning the next four. One point separates the two on my scorecard. Throw the one-two at him, okay? Look, this guy can't breathe now, you understand? Every now and then you got to give me one in the body though, okay? Now look, hold it, when he get close, right? Boom, boom, and then grab his ass, okay? You understand? No, no, diga que se componga. Sale de balance, sube arriba de él. Está perfecto. Otro aire. Otro aire. Well, we get a, a note from uh, inside, Dave. Go ahead with this replay and we'll pick it up. As we see Forrest working the body, the jab, and a good power shot there. And he's connected 
twice as much on those in the last two rounds as he had earlier. And that's one reason for that is because Mayorga is right near him. Mayorga's stamina is a question. Well, Mayorga relying on the big power punch and the intimidating shots. And right now, uh, the big factor is that Vernon Forrest is just is totally outboxing him here. And as Jay Nady again say, you can't hit him in back of the head. And uh, at the same time, telling Forrest to keep his hands uh, uh, up. This Mayorga. is round number 10. A oh, big shot landed that time by Mayorga. Forrest has got to avoid that. Is he hurt? Mayorga's all over him. Mayorga just caught him with the right hand inside there, but he's smart. This is what a smart fighter does. When you get hit like that, you grab him and walk him back on your heels. So Mayorga's turning it back around and trying to. He asked what round it was between 9 and 10. He was tired, but now he's trying to come back after Forrest has had a beautiful run. Well, I'll tell you, this is exactly what he needs. Mayorga desperately needs to win this round if he's going to win this fight. He's still out in front of my scorecard by one point, don't forget, in spite of the fact the second half of the fight has been all Vernon Forrest. But Mayorga is in the process with still two minutes to go in this round of taking this round. Forrest is not as successful in this the tenth round as he's been in the last four or five. Mayorga with uh, awkward shots. He may have taken a couple of rounds off, get a second win himself, and he appears to have it. He has that confident look, and he appears to be much more bull-like. Oh, look at this. This is terrific boxing. Both guys landing now. But there is a fatigue factor here, too, David. Forrest landing a terrific right hand, and Mayorga coming back at him. Mayorga's last six fights have gone a total of 17 rounds. It's been three years since he went 12, and you know you're training all that stuff, but if you're not going any distance fights, it could affect your training a little bit and show up somewhere where you take a couple rounds off. Well, he's taken four rounds off, but he's not taking this round off. This round is pretty close, and it's going to determine who wins it in this last minute of this round. And it's Vernon Forrest who clipped them and spun the head at the start of the final minute. A lot of energy expended by the wild shots of Mayorga. Much more under control as Forrest, who exchanges uh, by throwing two punches but doesn't land anything. Mayorga makes a miss, and he wants to turn this right back into a street ball. This is a tough round to score to this point, too, by the way. Yeah, Forrest has more purposeful retreat even when he's moving back. He tries to clip Mayorga on the way in. Now when Vernon Forrest moves, there is a purpose to it. 30 seconds to go, and this is the 10th round. Remember, it's a 12-round championship fight. Mayorga just chasing him around. Nice defensive foot movement that time by Vernon Forrest, avoiding the assault and the barrage thrown by the Matador. Well, this is a tough round to score, Dave. I don't know which way I'm going in this one. You know, the classic boxer looks better. But Mayorga has really chased him down with aggressiveness in this round. But how effective has it been? With all that chasing, it was a short, crisp right hand off the hands of Forrest that landed. Boy, the crowd likes this. Look at them on their feet. Mayorga came at him early, and then Forrest turned it around in the last minute of the round. This is an exceptional fight. Mayorga tried to steal it at the end. Uh, I don't know that he's doing enough. I don't know how you're going to score that. I, you know, all I can do, because we can't give it full concentration, is, is score it even. I can't give that to either guy based on not 100% concentration. So uh, I still have Mayorga slightly out in front in this fight based on that. Shoot the uppercut only when you're close, not from the outside. I know everything. You let him steal the last 30 seconds. That's why he's rushing to you. You can't let him steal. You tell this is a now, tight know, fight you know up for grabs. You know the fight is close. Okay. Come on, baby. Suck the it up. The tension in the building is this fight is very much in doubt. Terrific right hand there by Mayorga. And then comes back already. Nice left hook. This is where Mayorga, early in the round, did some of the best work he'd done in the last four as he came out storming, trying to take back the momentum. Well, he did enough to at least get a tie in that round of my scorecard anyway. So, with that said, I have the fight still dead even. I got Mayorga slightly out in front in the fight. So here we go to the 11th round. Let's see if Forrest can get back to that box. He can be aggressive. Mayorga tries to catch him coming in, and he wants to pick it up as he bombs away with the right hand, but both of them miss. Chops him again behind the left ear. Very important thing to keep in mind. This scorecard of the first five rounds to Mayorga is correct. And he only had to win one more round of this entire fight to keep his title, even by a draw. So the percentages is with him, and therefore if Forrest turns it around, it will be a dramatic turnaround. Well, the thing is, uh, how did the judges see that 10th round? Uh, I thought that uh, Mayorga actually landed more effective blows in that round, but uh, 
you know, sometimes when you have the classic boxer, it's very hard for the judges uh, to go with the wild man in Mayorga. And you pointed out that attitude can make a difference. Well, we'll find out. Don't forget, we have two guys from overseas, Larry O'Connell and Ove Overson. Both of them have done numerous amount of world title fights, so they're both experienced judges. The right hand gets through that time by Brendan Forrest. Well, here we are with the minute gone in this round, and it's a dead even first minute. Forrest attempting to continue to try and outbox Ricardo Mayorga here. Mayorga coasting a little bit. He needs to turn up his urgency, too, because he's got to take one of these last couple of rounds definitively, and then I think he's got a good shot of winning the title, or retaining the title, I should say. And Forrest uh, needs to continue doing what he's doing. He's doing a nice job boxing and have himself in a position for the last minute of the round to win the round. Mayorga's punch volume and its effectiveness have gone down dramatically in the last few rounds as he's gotten tired and he's been in front of Forrest and now he's trying to win the fight on heart. Yeah, he is. He's showing heart here because he's tired and then very definitely he's fatigued, but he's trying to land some heavy blows. Here's the boxer now showing that he's a terrific boxer. You know, and this is going to come down to the opinion of judges because look at this. Well, that was a good definitive blow that time. The eyes beginning to swell of Vernon Forrest. Forrest uh, looks a little more sheepish the way he's walking away. Remember in the last uh, couple of rounds when he was bouncing away, he was avoiding shots nicely with good defensive tactics, but now he's planted his feet and just stopped it. He's not throwing the jab out. He's allowing Mayorga to come back in kind of the way he did in the first five rounds. Mayorga right now is forcing the fight again. He cracked him with the right hand. Vernon plants and throws a right hand of his own. 25 seconds to go in the 11th round. Touches up Mayorga. Mayorga trying to pound him with right hands inside as Vernon Forrest's fatigue factor now is beginning to show. Neither guy has been down. Nobody really shaken during the course of the fight. No cuts, no head butts. Both guys, as you'd expect at this stage of the fight, puffy around the ice. I think that Mayorga out-hustled Vernon Forrest in the 11th round. I really do. And I'm giving it to... Mayorga. I thought he out him, Dave. Tell hey, you what, remember he only has to win a little bit after that big start to keep it. We got to win this round big. We okay, got to win this round big, Captain. I got it 106-104, but we've learned earlier tonight that we're not exactly on the money, uh, partially because the judges are sitting in different angles than we are, but it's a very close fight. It's anybody's fight. Keep your hands up and keep them tight. Don't get sloppy. You understand what I'm saying? No para abajo. Nada abierto. No quiero que te sumo. Dave, give us that stat that we just heard. Between the two fighters after 11 rounds, only a one percentage point difference in punches landed. That's awesome. It shows how close this fight is. Well, it shows you how the punch stat shows the fight is, but it doesn't really mean that the punches that Mayorga landed in the first five rounds weren't more effective than the many punches that uh, Forrest threw through six, seven, eight, and nine when he cruised through those rounds. Here we go, the 12th and final round for the WBA and WBC 147 pound welterweight championship of the world. And now Forrest trying to show his classic boxing skills. Mayorga with a real sense of urgency trying to leap on the guy and land a heavy blow to try to finish this thing definitively and win it definitively. This fight is very close and too close to call as Vernon Forrest is knocked back on his heels. Mayorga on top of him. He's clearly the aggressor right now. We're in the first minute of the final three minutes of the fight. Mayorga seems to have whatever second win he lost or tried to get back through the uh, later portions of the fight. He certainly seems to have it all back right now. He's confident. He's waving, trying to get the crowd in, and it backfires on him. The crowd goes against Mayorga for that tactic, and then Forrest tags him with two. Well, the problem here now is that he's taking a shot that he didn't need to take. And if he loses this round, I mean, this fight's too close to call all of a sudden. Jay Nady's done a terrific job with two brawlers out there uh, keeping this fight clean. Nobody's been cut. This is one of the better performances I've seen Jay perform in a, well, I don't want to say in a long time because he's a terrific referee, but he's done a great job. Mayorga had better not showboat. It's uh, too early for that. And look at this. He gets touched up by Brendan Forrest unless he's supremely confident that he won, as you said, one or two of those rounds from 6 to 11. But he better win this round. He's playing to the crowd, but the crowd is not playing back. Yeah, the crowd is, is into it, but they don't like what they see. And playing with the crowd isn't helping him because he's taking shots here. Well, it passed the halfway point in the final round of the fight, and it's still anybody's round. 
Coming up to the one minute remaining mark in the corner of Mayor desperately screaming at him to come on and finish strong. The last minute of the fight could tell the story in this fight. It's that close. Vernon Forrest is loading up the shots. He looks the pressure of the two right now. He's been the pressure on the outside, firing the two shots. Uh, he's on the round to this point as Mayorga comes trying to land the big shot, but Forrest is tying him up, something we talked about earlier. How uh, that's a good way to disrupt what Mayorga does. Touches him up again. Mayorga just really isn't landing much at all in this round whatsoever. Forrest misses with his shot. And if Forrest is going to outbox him here in the closing few seconds, which he seems to be doing, Mayoga tries to finish strong. Everybody in the arena is on their individual feet. Is anybody, individual foot, I should say, a feet? I got that out. But inside of 10 seconds to go, both guys aren't leaning much on the table. Mayoga still has had a tendency to showboat in this round, and it may cost him the fight. Who knows? As all right, there's the bell. Fight. It's all over. It was a tale of two fights, David. Did Mayorga get any one of the last six rounds of the fight? Because he certainly, in my opinion, definitely won the first half of the fight. And interesting thing here, what would this will boil down to is how much did Mayorga have in the bank when Forrest began his run? And that's what this will boil down to because Forrest controlling the second half of the fight. How much of a lead did Mayorga get off to before Forrest made the run? And I think that Mayorga was able to steal at least one round in the last six, so that, that's good for him. The question is, did he get those first five? If he did, he's in good shape. Well, I haven't scored 115-114 uh, in, a, in a tremendous battle. I did have one round even, which means that uh, tenth round I scored even, which means the fight could go either way, okay? But I have a 115-114 on my scorecard, and no matter what happens in this fight, Mayorga bombs away for the first four or five rounds, and in the second half of the fight, Forrest reached way down, classic boxing skills, did a great job coming back. It's, uh, it's in the judges' hands, and when it's that close, the guys gave all they had. They left nothing on the table. Now, they gave it all. It was an excellent performance of art by both fighters, and Forrest, to his credit, turned it around when he was being mugged, and he shook off the effects of the first fight, and then just went at him and tried to rally. Even though the consensus might have been only that it would be Forrest staying outside trying to protect the lead against the charging Mayorga, Forrest was rallying and trying to come from behind and take this. His corner thinks he did it. Al Mitchell certainly thinks he did it. We'll find out soon if he was able to overcome the early points advantage that Mayorga had. Boy, I tell you, I'm exhausted. I enjoyed this fight. Uh, my 749th world title fight like it was my first. This was a terrific uh, sporting contest. Uh, two different guys, and it's taken a long time to tally these score sheets, uh, meaning that it, they may have it as close as we do, and they don't want to make any mistakes again. The judge from the UK is Larry O'Connell. From Denmark, it's Ove Oveson. And from the Nevada State Athletic Commission is Jerry Roth. And again, I had it scored 115-114 largely in the fact that I thought Mayorga won the first five rounds of the fight and then it was Forrest coming back strong six through uh, maybe ten. Here we go, here's Jimmy Lennon. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. We have a majority decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Jerry Roth scores about 114 to 114, even a draw. Overruled by judges Larry O'Connell, who sees it 115 to 114, and Ove Ovison, who scores about 116 to 112 in favor of the winner, and still champion, Ricardo El Matador Mayorga. He deserves it. He got the early lead, despite what it looked like late with Forrest coming on. Remember, Mayorga didn't have to do much in the second half of the fight. He had the big lead. Well, David, Larry O'Connell had it exactly the same way we had it, 115-114. Ove Obson uh, didn't give the even round that I gave in the 10th uh, round. Uh, he uh, scored that in favor of Mayorga all the way, and that's the only point difference. I scored that 10 round uh, too close to call. And uh, Jerry Roth had it uh, a dead draw, and I wouldn't argue with that either. The way Mayorga fought, yeah, putting the rounds in the bank, was critical and you know
to Forrest's credit, he pulled out of the hole and made this an excellent fight. Just ran out of time. Well, I tell you, uh, it was uh, sensational. I think we're going to try and stay around here and see if we can get any sort of an interview with uh, Ricardo Mayorga. Vernon Forrest's disappointment has left already. Uh, it was a tremendous effort by Ricardo Mayorga, who had to uh, reach down late and win one of those last uh, couple of rounds of the fight, and he did the great job, and it was the 11th round that turned out on my score sheet to be key. It was just a, a tremendous uh, effort. I uh, want to thank a couple of people here tonight, uh, Bobby Goodman and Peyton Shear, the matchmakers. Uh, our producer, uh, of course, has been uh, uh, Frank Belmont, who does a, such a great job, and our associate producer has been Jason Bidell. But you stick right with us, folks, because we are going to have an interview. We've just found out, and uh, we'll be dropping in on the American Network, HBO, as we take it here on HBO International. Here we go. Larry Merchant of the American Network, HBO, will do the interview. Why was this more difficult than the first fight? Si ustedes observan, ni los dedos de la mano son iguales. Hay muchas diferencias. No even your, 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 the hands on your fingers are the same. Was he able to take, was he able to take your best punches better this time? ¿Él pudo resistir los golpes tuyos más esta vez? Sí, eh, pero en una, en una parte sí. Pero la verdad, todo mi equipo me estaba diciendo, no te juegas en dos asaltos. Todo el mundo está, eh, siempre ha dicho que tú, que tú no coges 12 asaltos. Pelea la pelea con él para que para, mi, mi equipo todo me lo dijeron hasta mis espaldas. Pelea la pelea con él, castigarlo para que si lo no quiera, sigue boxeando. Si lo vería, no se va a retirar. Por ahí puede estar ya hasta listo. Yeah, he was able to withstand the punches more this time, but my uh, uh, group told me, let's fight the guy. If we knock him out, we, we knock him out. But we know we can go 12 rounds. Tell us about fighting a pure boxer. Can somebody box you? Or is your style just too wild and aggressive for them to be able to do that? ¿Cómo se siente pelear a un puro boxeador? ¿Tú crees que un puro boxeador, un estilista, te puede aguantar a ti, resistir tu empuje? Yo, yo pienso que no, la verdad. Eh, te lo juro que que fuera hoy se levantó con el pie derecho. Yeah. I don't think any any uh, straight boxer would, would be able to do that. Forrest was at his best today. Pero aquí está mi jefe, la vez que mi jefe me lo contraste, bueno, lo vergueo todos los sábados. But uh, here's my boss right here, and whenever he puts, whoever he puts in front of me, that's who will fight. In one round, you stood in front of him and dared to hit you. Why did you do that? En un round, esto te paraste frente a él y esto lo desafiaste que te pegara. ¿Por qué hiciste eso? Ay, mira, qué pendejo, que no pega nada. I just know he's, he's just, he's just, he's just, he's just, he can't punch hard. <laughs> All right, they clearly expected you to get tired in the later stages of the fight. Are you in better condition than some people give you credit for? Todo el mundo esperaba que tú te cansara al final de la pelea si llegaba a 12 rounds. Tú estás en mejor condición de lo que tú, eh, de la gente te, se cree que tú estás. Yo era lucido mejor si fuera ese parada, pero, pero es difícil querer correr para alcanzar a un luchador y, y fajarse a la vez. Pero si se me ha parado, lo mato. It, I would have looked a lot better if Forrest would have traded with me. It's very hard trying to uh, uh, chase him. But if he would have stood, I would have knocked him out. Some people will question whether you seriously do as much smoking when you drink and drinking when you smoke because of your good condition. What do you say to those people? Mucha gente tiene en duda que en realidad tú fumas tanto como dices que fumas y tomas tanto como dices que tomas. ¿Qué dices tú de eso? Ese parte me jodera, me lo quiera, la verdad. Eso no es muy en serio, la verdad. But what I really take serious is, is the future of my family and uh, Don King. Thank you very much for a great fight. Congratulations again, Ricardo. All right, that was a brilliant effort. David, a final comment from your standpoint? Well, my own is like a racehorse to get that to a big lead, and though he was a little heavy-legged down the stretch, he had enough. I think he won this fight early. Great work with you again, Dave. I really enjoyed it. Pleasure nice with you too, my man. All right, so in a unanimous decision, Vivian Harris takes off uh, uh, Suleiman Ambe in a unanimous decision to uh, retain the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World. In a split decision, Zab Judah defeated Demarcus Corley to take away his WBO Junior Welterweight Championship. We've got a brand new Junior Welterweight Champ with 140 pounds.
at Zab Judah and in the brilliant fight you just saw as they celebrated from Managua, Nicaragua, Ricardo Mayorga has won a majority decision over the great boxer Vernon the Viper Horace. Well, it's been a great night. We want to thank everybody from the Orleans family, Rich Niedemann and the Gunn family, handling steps tonight. Annie Kelly, we thank her for the great job she did. And uh, our ringside security, as usual, provided by Poncho Lamone. For our stage manager, Rick Van Bergen, and our tech manager.